Steve, as you said earlier, a little bit of a touch of deja vu that we're both sitting here Certainly on the is. couch, but it's 12 months later. Um, I haven't got a big fat belly. You haven't? <laughs> um, I've still got silly hair. You've got, still got very silly hair. <laughs> um, well, no, that's that. you said that was your wife's words. I don't think it's silly. <laughs> no, well, it's, it's become a bit of a good luck charm now with... Uh, it, 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 a vain attempt to match my Bournemouth Athletic Club vests in a sort of bright yellow kind of a way. Sometimes ginger, sometimes yellow. But um, yeah, it's become a bit of a tradition now every year for London. So it's a good laugh. So I'm gonna stick to it. I mean, it might be your lucky charm. It may well be. Um, looking back on uh, when we when we spoke um, last year, I'll just touch briefly on it. You you had this you know really rapid and, and impressive sort of rise to fame. You, you, you know, with having been a postman and doing a bit of running in your thirties, to suddenly discovering that you actually had this uh, pretty amazing running talent. Yeah, I mean, as as we mentioned last year, the the the, uh, the drive for me initially to start running was the fact that I was overweight at the time, considerably overweight compared to now about six stone heavier than I am today obviously I'm race weight today so a bit lighter than I am normally but anyway so yeah that was sort of four uh, about four years ago now that I was 16 odd stone and um, uh, took up running to lose weight and to take my mind off the fact that I'd stopped smoking and I haven't looked back from there basically so um, yeah now this will be uh, my fourth London in a row and uh, hopefully, uh, if we're lucky, uh, another PB. Yeah, we talked about the, the PBs. 2010, you ran 2.19.38, 37. Yeah. Um, and last year, you, you, when we spoke to you, you weren't in the best shape. You'd had a cold. A few things had gone against you. You got very close to your PB. I, I was, well, if I, as I crossed the line, I thought I'd matched it to the seconds. But um, the chip timing very kindly informed me that I'd, in fact, missed my PB. Oh, well, I was one second slower than my PB with a 2.19.38. So, um, yes, I have to say, slightly frustrated, obviously, not to PB. But it was quite entertaining crossing the line um, after 26.2 miles, 12 months later later to find that you pretty much ran exactly the same time as I had the year before almost to the second so yeah very very surreal in a way to be honest but hopefully hopefully uh, not the same time this year perhaps just a couple of seconds faster would do <laughs> well, for me though what is is amazing is you, you sit there so casually sort of like going well yeah four years ago I was six stone heavier and then, and then you, you know, in 2011 you okay you were one second outside your PB but you were fifth fifth British male athlete overall in the London Marathon I mean that is just in my mind it's just incredibly impressive yeah i mean it uh, it was a it was a tough day for some uh, it was a reasonably hot day last year um, and some people didn't cope quite as well with the heat as others and there were a few dropouts ahead of me which um, uh, and i i, I it was one thing that went well for me on the day is I, I i seemed to cope with the slight increase in temperature quite well um, so I think that probably helped to uh, bring me up the uh, Brit placings on the day last year. So yeah, as you said, fifth, I think it was fifth overall and twenty. Sorry, fifth Brit and twenty-second overall last year. It's one of those things you, you kind of got to look back four years previously and say to yourself, if anyone had said to you you're going to finish top twenty in the London Marathon, you, you'd have gone. You're having a laugh, wouldn't you? Absolute madness. Yeah, I mean that's that's what drives me now every year to just continue with the training and try and be the best runner I can because you know you don't get feelings. There's very few places I could find I could get that kind of satisfaction and that kind of feeling anywhere else. And uh, once you've had it, <laughs> you want to keep having that that same uh, that same feeling of success and satisfaction. So that's why I'm uh, back deja vu here, 12 months later, having put all the training in again um, uh, to try and hit that PB again this year. Just um, talk us through a little bit how how you're feeling. Last year was, it wasn't negative. You were still you know very upbeat, but you weren't going into the race as well as you wanted to. How how do you feel going into to the race this Sunday's race? Yeah, I mean last year my taper period, I was a bit of a nervous wreck to be honest because I I didn't know where my fitness was or where my health was, and yeah, it, it wasn't the best. Whereas this year I've been very relaxed about it, and I feel really good during the taper. So. Um, hopefully that doesn't mean uh, things <laughs> it all feels a bit too good at the moment so I mean I, I'm, I'm realistic insofar as I know that probably on my best day I'm probably looking at um, about 218 um, and that's the sort of pace I'm going to be going out at this year um, hopefully hitting halfway around 69 minutes um, and um, yeah any anything for sort of 218 um, anywhere further up to my PB as long as it's a PB and I'll be a very happy man.
Um, last year, as you, as you mentioned, the, the weather was, wasn't was great, or was great for some, it was warm. This year, is, it's just kind of not looking good all around. It's gonna, it looks like it's going to be pretty wet and windy. And uh, Yeah, although having said that, the long-range forecast, which uh, obviously I pay a little bit of attention to. You've been studying. <laughs> well, you've got nothing else to do in the taper, so you might as well. But actually, as we've progressed through the week, the long-range forecast has actually started to improve. Have you ever thought that if you don't get like a job in running that you could be a weather reader? <laughs> you, do, you do learn quite a bit about the world. But um, uh, the wind, which is the main concern, the, the rain I'm not too fussed about, but um, the temperature looks good. Um, yes, it perhaps might be raining, but as I said, not fussed about that. The wind has actually dropped uh, in terms of speed um, as the weeks progress. So um, fingers crossed we might be we might be okay on the on the weather front as well if we're lucky. And, and if you're if you're looking for for a 218 or, or thereabouts somewhere, have you looked at the start list and looked at the guys that you could po possibly run with? Because running a good marathon, it also depends a lot on how lucky you are, what, the kind of group that you're able to run with. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, the, if 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 you're running that sort of pace, it, you if you try and do that sort of run on your own, then you, you you're in trouble. But I mean, I I've already spoken to and um, know a few other guys that are aiming to hit halfway in the same time as me, and we're going to have a group of at least four or five of us that are Brits that are aiming for a 218 type time so um, th I think there's the, there's going to be sort of two distinct groups I think the the guys that are in sort of the same similar sort of shape as me just under the 220 type area and then there's the, going to be the the guys that are one step above that are heading for the uh, attempting the Olympic qualifying time of sub 212 because obviously I mean that's not something I'd consider I mean I'm realistic about where my fitness is and and that six minute gap from 218 to 212 is is a world apart for me I'm afraid it. But um, there will be there will be a good group of Brits running at that sub 212 um, uh, pace group as well. So I, th I think we'll probably find sort of five or six Brits in that group and five or six Brits in in the group that I'm going to be in as well. So hopefully we should have some company for at least at least the first half of the race before we all start to do our own thing. <laughs> <laughs> some people dropping off. And yeah, <laughs> but um. Okay, so that's Sunday. So where where are we after Sunday? What's the, what's the long-term forecast? We're in Tenerife, actually, uh, eating lots of food we shouldn't be and, um, yeah, hopefully getting a tan. <laughs> I'm flying straight out on Monday. So it's been, that's another tradition as well as the city hair. I, m the wife and I tend to uh, uh, go away for a nice week's holiday where I, I try not to think about running at all. Um, but beyond that, I'm not too sure. Um, I've... I've Possibly, um, I dabbled in a bit of uh, 50k running at the beginning of the year, just as part of my training for London. I did the Gloucester 50k, 50K um, which is the first time I'd gone over distance for a marathon, which I quite enjoyed. And there's some, perhaps some opportunities there for me later in the year um, uh, that my time at Gloucester might have qualified me for certain events. Um, and it's something I'm quite interested in. I, I don't want to um, go completely ultra just yet because until you're too young until, until i can until i'm happy that i've got the most out of myself at a marathon level if i was to start thinking about training for 100ks and things then um i think i i wouldn't be able to reach my potential at the marathons but it's something i'm sort of keeping keeping on the back burner as it as it were and um, 50k is just that little bit more than a marathon that you can dabble with it without really changing your training too much so um it uh, depends what opportunities arise after london it, i might do um, a 50k or, or an autumn marathon but undecided yet sunday's the key at the moment and then and then a holiday <laughs> well ha have a have a great race on sunday um you, you you really are a truly inspiring story you know it really is and uh, but just just everything it's not just kind of like you're just not running the marathon you're just kind of up there and having run myself I I'm gonna really appreciate you know what you're doing and what you've achieved and, and it really is is quite remarkable so um, we will look forward to looking out for you on the TV on Sunday and I don't think we're gonna miss you with that haircut <laughs> that's the plan and uh, maybe I'll see you again next year <laughs> uh, hopefully <laughs> excellent cheers thank you